Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Morning Dew. Daily events worldwide, and we are on September 22nd, 2021. Welcome to another Surviving Day on the Planet, and welcome to the Daily Dew, giving you a full space weather, world weather, volcanoes, earthquakes, anything else, giving you an update on our world, and as well, our sun. Looking at the last 48 hours, 304 angstroms, some pretty bright regions. We have one, two, three, four sunspots that are active right now. And two of them produced up to C-class flares today. Ghost flux definitely seeing an increase. Looking at the last 48 hours incoming, a lot of plasma associated with the southern region. We did have a coronal mass ejection that was ejected our way as well. So we will be expecting space weather from the coronal hole. And as well, these flares and coronal mass ejection. Amazing imagery co coming out of Solar Dynamics Observatory as we're looking at and observing a very active solar cycle 25. Quick look here at the bright regions producing the small flares today. That quick flash, that was a B class. And as well, top right of the sun here looking at another solar flare and plasma filament building on the northeastern limb looks to be about the height of six earths stacked on top of each other just to give you an example of how high that plasma is erecting from the sun looking at here multi-spectrum you can see all the space weather events that northeastern limb watching the plasma filament <clears throat> that does fool a lot of people on the internet saying that there's a planet as it creates that circular wind motion. Looking here at 193 angstroms, we do have quite a big building coronal hole, Earth-facing position, and as well another one deepening and building in the northern hemisphere of our sun. So heads up, we will be seeing an increased solar winds in which... That's what coronal mass ejections most effect is, is the solar winds. Looking at the annual spiral, the space weather prediction for the next three days. We do have some incoming space weather on the 25th and 26th from the CME that was ejected. Other than that, no major new events but we are expecting a space weather jolt. We saw the phi angle flip yesterday, and now we're seeing increased earthquakes across the planet. At one point, we were at about 460 earthquakes the last 24 hours. Looking at the magnetosphere plots here, showing how our planet is handling the solar winds but it's not really the solar winds that I'm worried about. It's the pressure. And you can see the pressure is on our planet right now. And it's showing across USGS with over 460 shakers across the planet. It started off with a pretty sizable 6.5 in Nicaragua. Looking at our solar x-ray flux, it was hovering in B-class range. Real-time solar wind, we're sitting at about 377 kilometers per second right now after jumping up to just under 400 kilometers per second. Looking at Lasco 2 image, no major events to show here either. Schumann resonance for today, a power of 35 a couple healthy spikes throughout the day, today and last night. Power of 35, quality of 17.4 for our Schumann residents. Now we're going to run down the last 24 hours for earthquakes as it's been very active. And it started out here with the 6.5 in Jocalilo, Nicaragua at a 30 kilometer depth and that was offshore and it did prompt tsunami watches but no warning or tsunami was imminent 
many aftershocks throughout the area. Corinto, Nicaragua, sizable 5.6 being there. As well, a 4.1 here, Virgin Islands to report. Increased activity there. Looking across the United States, 3.4 there in Mentone, Texas, as well as 3.4 here in Monadero, Mexico border. Moss Landing, California, 3.4 as well. Earthquakes encroaching and moving closer towards San Francisco, as well as sizable 3.2 here to report northwest of Stanley, Idaho. And we've seen the increased activity through the region, even up into the Cascades over the last 24 hours. And I've been saying, keep an eye on Idaho through the Salmon Mountain Range. Let's have a look here at the USGS showing all of the minor earthquakes from today. Small swarm here. Cobb, California. And as well, continuing Colville, California. Small swarm there. Minor activity here, northwest of Yellowstone. The largest through the region being a 1.4 West Yellowstone, Montana. So activity coming back to the region. As it's been quiet for a couple weeks now, but it's been increasing over the last couple days. So heads up, Montana. And as well, through the Cascades. Minor activity here being reported. Mount St. Helens right in the crater. And as well, west of Mount Rainier. Again, over 400 earthquakes the last 24 hours. Minor activity here as well through Alaska. 3.4, the largest being the last 24 hours, Chiniac. But increased activity is expected as there is a large low coming into the region. 5.5 there reported in Russia as well. 4.9 just recently, Mongolia. Activity coming back to the Philippines plate. And as well, Indonesia, Ternate. Indonesia with a 5.4. And the Philippines with a 4.7. Cinnabung, 4.5. 4.4 here, Indonesia. 4.5, Papua New Guinea. And then a pretty sizable and deep earthquake here. Kermadec Islands. 5.0 at a 355 kilometer depth. Very interesting action across the planet right now. As well, 5.0 here, Araco, Chile, 4.4, quickly followed. And as well, a little more northward here, San Antonio de los Cobros, 4.4, 189 kilometer depth. So across the world, we definitely did see an uptick. And even down here, South Sandwich Islands, 5.0, 5.0, all around the Michael Volcano, the only active volcano in that region. Let's have a quick look here. The last seven days for earthquakes, a lot of deep earthquakes, and they seem to be on every continent, but North America, small release through the Juan de Fuca, but deep movement through Fiji, Indonesia, and as well, increased activity coming to Russia. But definitely seeing a pattern here moving northward into the North American plate, and I'm surprised we've only seen the 4.3 there off the coast of BC. Quiet across the African plate, continual eruption, at La Palma. Let's have a look at the most recent volcanoes getting updated. Sabankaya in Peru. Swiss and Ajima in Japan. Kermiski in Russia. Semis Napochnoi, United States. Reventador in Ecuador. Many alerts looking at 118 across the world. La Palma, Fuego. Popo in Mexico. Era in Japan. 
Tsunami Watch is there, many storm warnings as well. Simaru, and as well, Katmai has awakened in Alaska. And just yesterday morning, I was checking out the satellite imagery over the region, and I did catch the huge plume and as well steam coming out of Katmai. And this is here looking at a GO Satellite 17 through the region of Alaska. You can see the bright red. That was some pretty intense ash and cloud coming out of that and particulates and then followed by a lot of steam. Now through the region, there are some pretty large systems affecting the area. So this is not surprising. This is just a heads up that the Katmai volcano has erupted and a very large ash cloud and particulates are being seen on satellite. As well, looking across the world, we have Tropical Depression 18 to talk about heading through the Atlantic. As well, Tropical Depression Rose heading north, northeastward towards Spain. And as well, Tropical Depression Peter that is still alive, getting ready to jot northward as well. And then we've got that Colorado Low and as well remnants of Nicholas now heading over Ontario. Flood conditions and alerts are going out all across the northeastern United States. And as well, tornado warnings through Pittsburgh and Cleveland today. Floods North Carolina right down to Florida. So heads up, my American friends. The rain's just about over. But we've got another big system getting ready to move in. And as well, we can expect some winter conditions in the long-range forecast. Let's have a look at the five-day forecast brought to you by MeteorEarth. And as well, daily events worldwide. Starting out here in Ontario, home base. As pretty cool conditions are going to be moving in throughout the week. Looking at about 10 degrees in the long-range forecast with that deepening low-pressure system which will affect northeastern parts of the United States and then up into Quebec. And then watch as another low-pressure system, system from the west comes and joins forces heading towards the Atlantic provinces. Parts of western Canada pretty big and wet, low, moving into parts of Vancouver this week. So the rain train continues for the British Columbia coastline and as well Alaska. Some above seasonable temperatures moving into parts of Alberta this week, especially southern regions. No major systems heading into the Gulf this week, overlooking the Atlantic. Deepening low pressure system here right in the middle of the Atlantic most likely will gain strength and some velocity heading towards Spain if that big high pressure ridge doesn't block it. And then we've got another Tropical Depression. This is Tropical Depression 18, who will be heading towards Barbados in the long range. And then another one to follow. L big low pressure system here. It will be affecting Iceland in the five-day forecast as well. Looking at rain and snow for the region, but some pretty intense winds and heavy snow is expected for Greenland as well as Northern push here, low pressure system coming out of northeastern Europe, heading down into the Black Sea, and then racing towards the Russia border. Big, cold, high pressure ridge moving in over Russia, heading southwestwards towards Europe. We've also got some pretty intense low pressure systems developing as well in the long range forecast. Parts of Central Europe, Eastern Europe, and as well, northeastern Europe, as a big system is heading in from the Bering Sea. Overlooking Southeast Asia, low pressure system heading into Thailand. Another one spinning through the Bay of Bengal, heading towards eastern shores of Pakistan. And then watch as this low pressure system grinds out of Tunisia, parts of western Pakistan. As well in the long range here, watch for the West Pacific to develop a tropical typhoon. Long range forecast looks like it's going to be a pretty strong one just west of Guam, the Mariana Islands.
overlooking Indonesia, daily evaporation rains, overlooking Australia, watching the long range low pressure system heading towards Brisbane, cool temperatures heading into Victoria and Tasmania, and as well a couple interesting systems heading into southwestern parts of Australia for the long range. Stay tuned for the daily update. Overlooking East Pacific here, pretty intense low pressure systems heading into Alaska, so watch for an uptick in seismicity. Nothing but daily evaporation rains through South America. Pretty dry week ahead for Africa. And that is your five day forecast brought to you by daily events worldwide. Going to leave you here looking at the southern hemisphere versus the northern, pointing out the dramatic changes especially through the Northern Hemisphere as we've got a tightening low-pressure system still locked and loaded spinning around the North Pole. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun. And thank you so much for watching. Prayers for humanity. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.